Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the future of the water and wastewater industry and the careers you didn't know about. And I'm your host, Dave Kosminski, and uh, we are on location, uh, out lovely Cape Cod for the CTAWWA and uh, CWWA conference. And uh, we're meeting a whole lot of special new friends. And uh, uh, another new friend in the, doing a podcast is uh, Maria Paris of Yum.com, who's actually one of the presenters here at the conference. And uh, it was an awesome presentation. So, Maria, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. So, uh, let's, let's do this. Tell me about your day job. <laughs> I know that- Right. Instead of just coming and presenting every day. So my background had started at project management. Okay. So getting teams together, you know, what are we get? who's going to do what by when, let's get it done on time and on budget. Okay. And from that, I expanded into facilitation. Okay. So that's why I call kind of, I was presenting today, but it's more facilitation because I want to get answers from the group. Uh, let's yes. share out best practices mm-hmm. on what we can do. Sure. So that, my day job is probably more project management, but I do facilitation. I travel a lot to different franchisees that we have at yum mm-hmm. so probably once a month nice nice so i noticed uh today's presentation you were focusing more on diversity so yes. tell us how that plays into the workplace and how that it plays into uh you know your business model you bet so this program started with uh taco bell and diversity and inclusion and we knew we had to give a message to all the franchisees across the country and what is our message? Mm-hmm. And we really discovered that, you know, at first we went into, ooh, should we focus on different generations? And this is how you need to treat, um, you know, the millennials, and this is how you need to treat this group. And what we really found out is that 80 year olds are really good at technology, and 18 year olds like to knit. You can't <laughs> put them in okay. one. <laughs> group okay so it's around diversity of thought what are those questions that i'm asking to make sure my team is very diverse okay nice now um you know how did uh, you, you hook up with i, I think ramana arranged you as far yes. as that goes so yes so um how, how did that process of come about so at yum i'm a contractor and so um a previous VP of YUM went and started her own business, Susan Pittman. Okay. So it was Pittman Consulting Group. And she had a relationship with Tie and Bond. Okay. And so we go there and do Leadership Institute. So there are 20 individuals each year that get identified or apply. And we go in and talk about key leadership skills that you need. Mm -hmm. Emotional intelligence, how to be a good listener, how are you going to build trust on your team, how do you handle conflict, and one of those pieces is diversity of thought. Nice, okay. So um, now that you've been introduced to the water industry, okay, what are your uh, what what are your thoughts on uh, on our business and, and so forth? So what I was uh, pleasantly surprised about today is I got to listen to the presentations this morning, and it really gets to my message of innovation. Mm-hmm. The clients now, customers are saying, "What are creative solutions to get and solve my problems?" And a lot of that is going out and asking and getting those different diverse perspectives. Yeah. Oh. Like the the ideas that I heard today were amazing. Like I'm going to build these things in the warehouse and mm-hmm. then go and set them up, and it, you know, really compressed our timeline, and we could do things twice as fast. Mm-hmm. That's diversity of thought. That's innovation, and I just saw a lot of that with okay. all the presentations today. Now, with with the various groups that you do, as far as that goes, do you find that you know the similarities between the. Uh, uh, hemispheres or uh, the worlds, if you would speak, are, are very similar. So um, so you're talking more geographically, kind yeah. of, or, yeah. yeah. So very, like we have more in common than we have that is, that is diverse. And a lot of business owners that I talk to have similar issues. Okay. Ooh, we're trying to hire people. We're trying to grow our business. Can we get to things, do things differently and mm-hmm. better? Mm-hmm. So 
that is very common. Now, how they approach it is, is always a little bit different. Okay. So, um, you know, the, the, the premise of my podcast when I started this, launched it over a year ago, was uh, I'm, a, I'm a baby boomer uh, okay. in in going to be retiring in a year or seven months uh, and so forth, is succession planning. Yeah. So um, what would be uh, our message, okay, to potential uh, uh, attract uh, uh, potential, uh, like I say, I, we have to refill the pipeline. Yes, <laughs> uh, yes. So to do that, what, what would you recommend? So for a succession plan, I like that you're already thinking about it. Sometimes I, I work with leaders that are like, okay, I'm retiring next month. Who should I get to replace mm-hmm. me? That's not enough time. No. So it's that thinking through that succession plan saying, all right, here are some people that I identify. And the key to that, where we're seeing right now is keep an open mind. Mm-hmm. Don't knock someone out just because you go, oh, I don't know if they'll be very good at this. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to have to do my research and get a big pool of candidates now. And I, when I have time, asking them questions, putting them in different situations. Mm-hmm. How did they handle that last crisis? What happens if something doesn't go uh, exactly right with a project? How are they handling mm-hmm. that? Now I can get a really good judgment of them because I'm seeing their actions. Okay. All right. Now, when you uh, classify people, you know, obviously the baby boomers, the Gen X, the millennials, okay. and so forth, okay. the, the, the students coming out of, uh, uh, of school today, what, what would you consider them? Well, they, they talk about Gen Z and okay. the eye technology because they are so good at technology. Mm-hmm. Not nitty? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's like, oh, wait, really? <laughs> but we, we see them, um, and, and the reason I know this is we ha- we're hiring a lot of those at Taco Bell Okay. restaurants okay and so we we've done a lot of research on well what do they like what um what would attract them to mm-hmm. the restaurant and then grow in their career to be that shift manager be an area coach be an rgm mm-hmm. and and build their career and a lot of what we're seeing is you know technology make it easy they can change their schedule um giving them notices through their electronics okay so we're, we're adjusting things. The other big thing is they're very social or most of their social activity is just through, um, you know, equipment. And so we're really trying to focus on getting them face to face. And so it's a new skill that we know we have to encourage and build on. But how do you? talk to your team member okay how do you go to your ship leader when Mm -hmm. you have a conflict okay so Uh we we've done a lot a lot of that skill building now as far as again pivoting back to the water industry what questions should we be asking i mean you saw you saw the group in there i did i did i would say are how are we approaching bringing people in to the water industry Mm -hmm. where are we recruiting where could i open that up to think differently on recruiting am i going to the same schools just by switching one or two things Mm -hmm. you're going to get a bigger Mm -hmm. uh, you know diverse group Mm -hmm. yeah so caster white or not love that yeah so that's the big thing thing to think and when I say ask what questions what what are you doing right now how do you build to get that bigger pool Mm -hmm. of knowledge you know I'm finding you know like I said I teach the high school class uh, and so forth and uh, you know one of the things that I stress with all of our students okay uh, is and I've mentioned it almost in every podcast is the power of networking Yes. Because you never know, okay, who you're going to see, who you're going to meet, right. who you're going to look in the eye, shake their hand, and so forth. Uh, because sooner or later, uh, you never know when they're going to have something that, oh, I know a person that can help me with that, and vice versa. And do you get a hesitation from them when you tell them, hey, you need to go out and meet people and network? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's amazing. You know, I, I, I'm the IT director for the town of Portland, but uh, I have a classroom which is basically my office in, in the town hall. And I, I transport kids, you know, from classes. I'll bring them down and, and put them in the workplace to give them some practical experiences. And as we're going back and forth at high school, you know, uh, you know, I'm driving the car, the kids in the car, and, you know, people are waving us. And the students say, 
is there anybody in this town that you don't know? <laughs> you know <laughs> so that's so good. Like but, you're giving them an example. Yeah, look, exactly. Look at all these you know, people I know. And, and so forth. But, you know, that, that's that's the thing. You know, we, uh, again, looking at the, the student pools today that are kids that are graduating from high school, even freshmen in college, they don't have a clue what they want to be when they grow up. And they... I don't think they have to, you know, just be ready. I didn't, you know, I'm not in the business that I graduated. uh, So I was a telecommunication major. I thought I was going to go into television and be the next weather girl. Okay. Totally different. Okay. (laughs) Well, you know, and and that's the thing. And, you know, in in, in interviewing, you know, most most of the podcasts that I've done, I've done, you know, interviewing uh, people that are that are in the industry, both in the, you know working as a uh, you know treatment plant operator, construction engineer, whatever, even on the consultant side of you know who is uh, you know doing engineering for various things and so forth. And you know, one of the things that uh, you you see you know across the board is the diversity going yeah. back to your yes, your it is of of you know thing, but it's it just exposing these students to you know everything that's under that umbrella yeah you know uh, yeah. And, and a lot of times most of the, kids, the people that, that that i've interviewed that are in the water industry and you ask them what how, how you got in the water industry and it's like by accident <laughs> you know did you just happen yeah. it, it just happened. It happened you know i met a guy then i met a guy yeah. i took a part-time job in the summer i liked it you know uh, a position came open i applied for it i'm i'm here yeah, you know, so it's it's amazing how happenstance, okay, uh, affects you know the the, uh, the career paths. Of I so would many, agree. I would know. agree. But your connection or building network. I mean, the reason that I'm here at Cape Cod is because of a connection I had with Susan Pittman at Yum. Okay, and she saw something in me like, hey, I think you can do facilitation has taken me to Canada, UK, all across wow. the country because of that one connection. Sure. And then that connection to Ty and Vaughn and Ty and Vaughn to here. It's connecting the dots. It is. You know, that that that's the thing. So, um, you know, going back to, you know, roll back the calendar, uh, you know, when you got out of high school, what, what did you envision yourself doing? So, uh, okay, so let me think about high school. That was a long time ago, a long time ago. Well, I, when I went to college, I did, I minored in theater. I, I liked that in high school, but I didn't think of that as a career. Okay. So the next best thing was communications or mm-hmm. how to get into that. Yep. So that's kind of that leap. Um, but of course, yeah. It's totally changed. Yeah. Like once you get into work life and, hey, this well, is what I'm going to do. you know, then life happens. Life happens. <laughs> you know, happens. as that goes. But, yeah. Um, so, uh, so you got out of high school. Where, where did you go for college? Indiana University Ooh. in Bloomington. Yes, that, it was kind of a tradition the, with... Is that the Hoosiers? It is the Hoosiers. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, yeah, and when you ask me what a Hoosier is, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> It's just the Hoosiers. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> e- exactly. So uh, you know, I mean, um, that's that's a that's a fairly large school. It was huge for me because so I came, went from a private uh, high school with 420 people into at the time at Indiana University was 12,000 people. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. Well, pretty big. You know, people. our high school in in Portland is, uh, I think, uh, we're just about 390. Okay. You know, so similar. Yeah. You know, as far as and I goes. love the experience because I knew everybody. Yeah. I felt really good and close and safe. And you know, and the nice thing about those type, of, and you know, we do a good job. But but uh, you know, even with the small population that we have, uh, you know, when we do a high school musical or a high school play, oh. we get, you know basically a 90 percent participation rate among the students okay you that's know. incredible you know it is for that you know normally and they're all talented they're all you know yeah. uh but it's it, but it's amazing you know how you know they they, they find their own water level so yep. to speak you know if that you makes would sense. but yeah you know to go from there so um mm. so giving advice to a student you know grad what what would you say so i i like your connection piece in what I would like to see high school students do more is be adventuresome, ask more questions. If something looks interesting to you, reach out. That person is going to talk to you. Mm-hmm. They're going to be thrilled to help you. Mm-hmm. I think that's what 
causes some of them not to even say, oh, I'm not going to ask them. I don't know what they're going to say. Mm -hmm. Or get an introduction. Mm -hmm. But ask questions sure. to get more information. You know, and, and on the other side, you know, on the people that are in the industry, you know, we're always willing to talk about what we do because that that's what we do we're proud of what we do we're energized about what we do and we're more than willing to share that 100%. You know, expertise and that uh, you know that aspect because like i say it's uh you know everybody has to find their own way and they do you know, some it takes longer yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i'm still figuring out what i want to be when i grow up you know but whatever so but that that's it that's great um so uh where are you from the area so I am from Louisville, Kentucky. Oh, okay. We just had our Derby, which is big for Louisville, first Saturday in May, uh -huh. Kentucky Derby. And, and do, you, do, you, do you have the, the fedora, the of hat? Of course, I have the big <laughs> hat. I, so I did a fascinator this year, okay. so a little, little bit more subtle. And uh, do you do the traditional mint julep? So I am more, so mint julep is bourbon and uh, a sugar mix okay. and mint okay. and powdered sugar. Okay. Black. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, nice. I do not care for it, but there are many people that love it. I am more the lily. Okay. So that on Friday before <laughs> Saturday, Kentucky Derby, it's called the Oaks and just Phillies run. Oh, so okay. Philly, lily, I guess. Oh. And it's pink and it's very nice. girly and it's perfect. There you go. <laughs> There you go. So, um, on a personal side, what what is your what do you like to do for hobbies? So, I am an artist. Actually, Ooh. I do abstract painting, mm -hmm. and it's a lot of horses, I guess, because from okay. Louisville, Kentucky. But I really I've done a lot for nieces, nephews, family members, mm -hmm. and I have just kind of got into realizing that some people will pay for these paintings. So I've Darn. sold a couple. <laughs> uh, do you do acrylics, watercolor? Acrylics. acrylics. I okay. started with watercolor, and I like that, and I'll do some of that. But acrylics for me, mm -hmm. I can go do a little bit. Go, come back. Yeah, yeah. go okay. do work work, come back, add to it. So acrylics has been a better medium nice. for me. Well, that's that's great. So now, uh, are, are you going to be opening your own gallery anytime soon? <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> I think being small. <laughs> Uh, okay. Uh, my other alter ego, as I uh, as I told you, I own a music store. So, uh, what's your what's your taste in music? So, uh, when I <laughs> when I'm not doing all of this, I'm doing uh, I teach spin at the Y in oh, Louisville. Okay. So I love surprising people with all kinds of different music. Nice. So I would say alternative and pop. Not not too pop, but some of the pop I okay. go to because it's really easy to spin to. Okay. But I have been I've surprised people with a few songs that okay. you, you don't think you're going to spin to, it, but you're from? not. Oh, oh, nice. Yeah, some hard rock. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> now, typically, how many how many spinners do you have in a class? So uh, anywhere between eight and twelve. Okay. Do you, do you have a Peloton at home? By I do have a Peloton at okay. home. We just got it for this Christmas. And how do you like it? I love it. Uh -huh. It's really good because it gives me a lot of ideas, uh -huh. which is great. So it has been fun. But what's interesting is it's totally different setup, like the um, seat height and how far we put this and the different shoes. So yep. it, it took me a while to, to get, get used, used to it, okay. which is good for you okay it's like change, when you struggle like you change, change is good change, change is good, good. that's a good <laughs> so all right so uh the, the next the next question i have the, the desert island questions okay? okay so if you were stuck on a, on, a, on a desert island what food could you eat every day okay pizza love that's pizza. a that's a common answer oh is it really yes i just love it you know my last guess is you know so what's your what's your, what's your favorite that you could food, eat every day on a desert island he says ice cream <laughs> Which that oh yeah see every day I love ice cream but every day yes. yeah if you had a refrigerator yes yeah, otherwise you have to eat it fast <laughs> okay now what's yours my favorite food is uh, I actually uh, I'm of Polish heritage so I like uh, either the pierogies oh. okay or the uh, what they call the stuffed cabbage which is the glumkies okay and so forth so pierogies I've had yes uh, I really do. do you make those I do. yourself I do oh, I, my okay. mom oh. taught me how to make them years ago mm. and my kids every year we have our traditional Christmas Eve dinner and 
the week before we have our pierogi making party and you know uh, and my kids said, Dad, why don't you just go buy them? I says, no, <laughs> that's not. Is that the same thing? That's, it, it's, it, this is the tradition. Mm. And they everybody comes down. Everybody has a roll. You know, I, I roll a dough. One of them pinches. One of them rolls. Oh. And one of them stuffs. And, mm. you know, it's, it's, it's a working. Okay, one. next time I'm here, I would like a pierogi. Okay. <laughs> so, sounds like a plan. All right. Now, uh, from the music side, have you been to any concerts that uh, maybe... Okay, let me think of my remember. last. So, we in Louisville I like this small venue, uh-huh. and there is a band called the Lone Bellow. Okay, so good. He he's actually from New York, uh-huh. but wrote song wrote poems when he was in the hospital. His wife had had an equestrian accident, oh. and wrote poetry and really to her. And then eventually, once she got out of the hospital. He started writing songs. He partnered up with somebody and learned to play the guitar. So just that great story, and their music is awesome. Nice. Fantastic. Awesome. Well, anyway, well, thank you for coming down to the conference and sharing your expertise with thank our uh, attendees. I love it. And I'm so happy that you're able to talk to us on the podcast. Know, so fa- Fantastic. Uh, again, so, all right, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes this episode of the future of the water and wastewater industry and the careers you didn't know about and our new friend, okay, Maria Paris of Yum. Dot com. So, Maria, thanks so much, and uh, safe travels back. Thank you. And uh, we'll—I'll let you. I'll drop you an email when we drop this episode. Perfect. Thanks Thank so you. much. All righty.